Assembling a high quality model steam plant, this is part 11, the Stuart Models HB6 boiler. Fitting the check valves, fitting the gas system and the first steam test. And starting off with the check valves. These are a pair of Stuart check valves or clack valves as they're known. And they're known as clack valves because of the noise the full size valves make when the steel balls inside them slam shut on the seat as the water stops pumping. I need to fit two clack valves to this boiler. One of them is for the hand pump and the other one is to accept the water feed from the duplex pump. The Southworth duplex pump is a very powerful unit. It has two steam cylinders and two water cylinders, and both of the water cylinders are double acting, so on every stroke it's pumping water. It's just like leaving a tap running. And it's far too much for this boiler, and this is a 6 inch diameter boiler. What I'm going to do though is quite interesting. I'm going to put a bypass valve system in, like you would for a crankshaft driven pump so that it will be possible to run the duplex pump without it feeding the boiler. All it will do is return the water to the tank, which is a fairly pointless exercise, but these duplex pumps are really good to watch working. So by rigging this bypass system, the pump can be working fairly frequently, and all you have to do is shut the bypass valve, and the water will pump into the boiler, open the bypass valve, and the water will pump back to the tank. That's the first check valve fitted. I'm using shim washers for this, of course. I always use shim washers. Some people use crushable washers, and some people approach it from an entirely different way. I got a message from a chap who was mentioning lots of numbers and formulas for this, that, and the other. Well, I don't really do things like that. I do everything by feel. I'm not engineer trained, remember. I'm just a poor, hard working musician, recording engineer, and I live in the north of England and it's grim up north. I hope you've noticed that apart from using shim washers, I've also used some Loctite 542. And 542 in conjunction with a copper washer equals no leaks at all. This is a gas pipe, and it didn't come with a gas jet fitted. You have to fit your own. You do get the gas jet with the boiler, as well as a tank adapter. But at first I couldn't find it, I had to phone Stuart Models, who said, oh, it's probably in the box somewhere, and it was. I nearly threw it out. In with the kit was a filler adapter and this adapter fits on a commercial canister, and then that allows you to transfer the gas from the commercial canister into the small gas tank that sits on the baseboard near the boiler. And talking of small gas tanks, here it is. And I'm really struggling to fill this, which is most unusual. I've actually done videos about how to fill these tanks, but this one seems to be a little bit more leaky than normal, and oddly enough, after a while it stopped leaking, so I don't quite know what's going on there. And finally, I managed to transfer some gas from the canister into this small tank. A quick health and safety notice, and this is a warning, do not fill these tanks indoors. I'm merely demonstrating this for the video. I filled the tank properly outside. In this clip, I'm removing the safety valve because I have to put some water into the boiler. I've put a funnel in place of the safety valve, and I'm opening the steam valve because as the water goes into the boiler, the air needs to come out. And if you don't do this, then it will take ages and ages to get any water into the boiler. As this HB6 boiler is 6 inches in diameter, as it would suggest in the name, it takes quite a while to get sufficient water in the boiler before I can light the gas. I'd like the boiler to be approximately half full before I light the burner. And here in the gauge glass, it's showing that the boiler is half full. So it's time to replace the safety valve, and I can light the gas burner. But before I can light the gas burner, I need to pipe this to the tank. All you get with this kit is a fixing that goes on the gas tank and a jet holder, and the two parts are connected by a piece of 1 8 of an inch diameter copper pipe. And this copper pipe was really hard and almost impossible to bend. In fact, in order to successfully bend it, I had to anneal the copper pipe by heating it to dull red and quenching it in water. Then I could bend it like this. And this is after I cleaned up the copper pipe after the annealing process. So everything's looking okay. It's time to give this boiler its first steam test, but I'm not going to do that on the baseboard just in case things go wrong. I've noticed while working with this baseboard that it shows every mark. What I need to do is give it a bit of a rub down and rub some polyurethane varnish into it because at the moment it's not waterproof or oilproof. So for the test, I've moved the boiler off the baseboard onto a piece of wood on my bench. The gas has been lit and I'm now waiting for it to raise steam. I'm holding the tank to try and keep it warm because this is a number 16 jet and it's going to take a lot of gas out of this small tank which means the tank is going to chill. 
and after about 10 minutes, no steam was being raised, so I thought what I'll do is fit the pipe to an external commercial tank using the fitting supplied with the kit. But unfortunately, the thread of the fitting doesn't fit the one on the pipe, which is a bit weird. So I thought it's time to phone Stuart Models, so I phoned Stuart Models, and no one answered the phone. At this point, I did notice a faint glimmer of steam coming out of the pipe that I attached to the tap on top of the boiler. By the way, the oil you can see didn't come out of the boiler, that was in the pipe to start with. That gas canister was not very full, so I changed it for another gas canister and relit the gas using a bit of electricery that generates a spark. I think I've figured out why nothing's showing on the gauge, and I only noticed it when I started editing the video. If you look closely at the gauge, you will see that the needle is at the wrong side of the stop on zero, and that's why there was no pressure showing at all until I slackened off the nut and then retightened the nut, and suddenly the gauge jumped up, because as I twisted the pressure gauge, the needle jumped over the stop, and now it's in the right place. And there's a first time for everything, and I've never seen that before at all, ever in my life. And now, at long last, there's just over £25 per square inch showing on the pressure gauge. And also, the water gauge is leaking at the same time, and it's really pouring out of the water gauge, so I shouldn't really be doing this because it's not good to do this while you're in steam, but I do have protective glasses on and I'm being very careful. I've done a lot of this sort of thing. I'm just very, very gently nipping up the nut to just squash the o-ring and it stops leaking. What I didn't mention was also the bottom nut of the water gauge was only finger tight and that was the first to drip water, followed by the one I'm currently tightening and as the pressure went a little higher, I noticed that the top nut was also finger tight. I think maybe Stuart models could do with looking at their quality control. I would have expected better really of this boiler because it's not a cheap item at around £1,600. I tried ringing them for a second time but no reply so they must be on holiday or something. So there you have it, the Stuart models HB6 boiler test. And then the carbon monoxide alarm goes off. And when that happens, I generally stop what I'm doing and go outside the workshop and take the carbon monoxide alarm with me to reset it. My workshop, by the way, is not a sealed room. It's a double length garage and the garage door is fully open. But I'm cutting short the review of this boiler because I'm too young to die. I'm evacuating the workshop and I'll go and have a cup of tea until the carbon monoxide level subsides. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful.